Welcome in to the Reclaim Your Freedom podcast. And those of you who see me on video are also in the beautiful subconscious freedom community. In this episode, we're going to dive so deep on getting you really good at revealing any subconscious limiting stories or identities that are creating an experience of reality you want to uplevel. So the subconscious stories and the subconscious identities, which I'll break down the difference of today, are what's making up the code of what causes you to experience reality the way you do. And in this episode, I'll be breaking this down, how to reveal some of these subconscious limiting stories and identities so we can up-level our lives. And this is something that we do forever, 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 forever. Because at every new level, we reveal new stories and identities that might have worked for the last level of reality we were playing at, but get to up-level for us to be at this experience of reality we love to play at. So this is a continuous process. It's a powerful thing to get really good at. And if you're not in the subconscious freedom community, this community is free. We meet once a month and I bring up people live to do this subconscious freedom work with live. And especially for this podcast and for the people watching the video, you are all getting your own reflection workbook for free that you can keep using to remind yourself to focus on what matters so you can get to the root of why your experience of reality is playing out the way it is, heal the root cause, shift the root cause, and shift your experience of reality. When you change within, your world will shift. So if you're not already in the Subconscious Freedom community, I invite you to go join in there. You'll be sent a link to this video and this workbook right away. It's always going to be sent to newcomers. And if you're in the podcast and just want to listen, just want to passively listen, all good. You're going to get so much gold in this episode. So as maybe you guys who are in my world now for quite some time have gotten used to, I like to share the phrase that your reality is an extension of you. Now, a more accurate way to depict that is that your reality is you. However, because we're experiencing this realm of duality, it feels like reality is out there. It's something we're experiencing. However, the reason I say it's an extension of you can be broken down to the simplest understanding of knowing that every experience you have is filtered through your subconscious perceptions. So you are seeing wor the world of reality through a lens of your own subconscious filters. That's why there's so many different beings with so many different perspectives of the same thing because they have their own world of subconscious stories. This is also why if someone watches a, the news station red and the other person watches the news station blue, because it's media, it's programming, it's programming the subconscious stories that people hold, that's what media is doing, the people who believe in the red side of the news are going to think the people who are believing in the blue side of the news are just crazy. They're just going to say things like, oh my gosh, they're so crazy. Can you imagine that they believe that? And if people are really susceptible to the program, they'll then start fighting each other, which is what, unfortunately, a lot of these systems are doing, but not for you and I, because we are free of this, because we're aware of it, and we're choosing differently. When you are a consciously aware being, you cannot be manipulated with programming. So like, let's go. This is reclaim your freedom for a reason. Okay, so let's get into the good stuff. We want to understand what are the subconscious stories and identities that are causing me to experience this experience of reality the way I am. Because reality is an extension of you, and it will always, always, forever, ever, give you what you need for your evolution. Now, I want you guys to really get this on the deep level. It's not giving you what you want all the time. However, it is always giving you what you need for your evolution. So instead of fighting what is, why not see what is for what it is? An opportunity to grow, an opportunity to advance, an opportunity to reveal any limitations that aren't serving us. So people ask me the question, Sarah, when is it time to go into subconscious limitations? And I'll say, any time that you have a challenge in life, any time you notice the same old cycle showing up, any time you want to reach a next level. So 
all the time. However, it doesn't always have to be looking for the limitation. Sometimes it's also discovering what we love to experience and influencing our own mind with mindset work, with newer perspectives that allow us to play in a new experience of reality. This is why I have a program, Becoming Magnetic, so people can play with creation and use their soul's desire to evolve, their soul's spark of what they love to experience. Let that spark transform any of the limitations that no longer serve them, right? Okay, so your, your reality is an extension of you. It's not separate from you. It's always giving you what you need for your evolution. It's mirroring to you all the time, your own conscious and subconscious agreements, expectations, stories. This isn't new information. The ancient magi of Persia and these were like the mystics, the, the leaders, the spiritual leaders of the time. The ancient magi of Persia used to carry mirrors on their backs to symbolize how this reality works. In the book Shaman of Tibet that I quoted in the last podcast episode, it's quoted saying that life is nothing more than soul meeting itself in the outward world. And it's also why the physicist John Wheeler said, we are all tiny patches of the universe observing itself and simultaneously building itself. So you observe your experience of reality and you consider, is this the highest experience? How can I make it even better? How can I enjoy it even more? How can I fall in love with it? And your very question of that simultaneously builds new experiences of it. It's also why Neville said something so powerful. He said, man's chief delusion is his conviction, his idea that there are causes in this reality other than his own state of consciousness. He's saying it's a delusion to think that something's just happening to you. It's all you. So who are you going to be through it? This is what I always like to remind people. We might not always love everything that's happening. However, it's happening for our evolution. So who are we going to choose to be? How can we refine? How can we heal? How can we transform the subconscious code of what's making us us so we can experience what we would love to experience? It's also why Jesus is quoted in saying in the Nag Hammadi library, this is a library of texts that were taken out of the original biblical canon, but are quite beautiful to explore. But think of it just as a teacher. This is why Jesus said here, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom is inside of you and it's outside of you. Are you guys getting that? The kingdom is inside of you and it's outside of you. It's all you and it's all the kingdom. There is nothing hidden which will not become manifest. There is nothing hidden in your inner world that will not become manifest. Guys, people ask me the question, they say, Sarah, what if I'm afraid to go in my subconscious? What if I can't handle it? I'm like, your subconscious is generating 95% of your experience of your reality. You're already living it. Those challenges in your life, those are the things that are manifest as a representation of whatever is in your subconscious that gets to up level. So there's no hiding from that. We are living that. This is also why I share on a regular basis that time does not heal all wounds. It just doesn't. It just seeps the wound deeper into the subconscious where it will reveal itself through an unconscious way unless we are actually doing healing work as time passes time passes. So your reality is an extension of you. There's no separation and it's always giving you what you most need for your soul's evolution. So instead of resisting what is, instead of fighting what is, why not handle what is to the best of your ability and utilize it as an insight to what you get to up-level, the opportunity for healing and up-level so you can experience what your soul and heart truly want to experience in this life. However, sometimes we aren't always sure exactly what it's mirroring. People come to me and they're like, Sarah, but I'm so kind, so why are people being mean? And it's like, it's not always a direct mirror to whether you're kind or not, but it could be a direct mirror to how you actually treat yourself. Like maybe someone's kind on the outward surface, but is actually really mean and hard on themselves, and they're wondering why other people are mean and hard on them. It's like, well, it's mirroring how you treat yourself or it could be mirroring what you judge the most, or it could be mirroring an identity, which it always is, an identity that allows that. So if someone's always kind to, kind to others, 
And they're like, but why do people take advantage if I'm so kind? Well, they could have an identity that their needs don't matter. So if they have a subconscious identity that their needs don't matter, then it will feel like everyone's always taking advantage of them because they're living in the identity that their needs no, don't matter. But are you guys feeling this? It's never what someone else is doing. This is why so many people waste so much time in therapy, so much time with friends complaining about what someone else is doing instead of self-reflecting on what they're allowing. And I'm going to give you guys powerful self-reflection questions that slice through all the drama, that slice through the illusion of the material realm, that slice through the details that people love to complain about that just keep them in the same karmic loop of experiencing the same, th same old thing. I'm going to give you questions that slice through all of that and allow you to reveal what's actually going on within so you have the choice and opportunity to change it. So let's get into what you can do now to reveal some of these things. If you're in the Subconscious Freedom community, take out the workbook now. If you're not, you can write notes while, if, with the podcast, but I invite you to just come into the community. It's free. But you can just take notes with the podcast or just walk around and self-reflect on the questions that I share, whatever works for you now. To get clear on the specific subconscious limitation or identity that your reality could be showing you right now, could be revealing for you right now, is that you can ask yourself the question, what am I making this circumstance mean about me? This is you revealing how you relate to yourself that could be generating your experience of your reality. So what am I making this circumstance mean about me? So for example, if someone leaves in a relationship, if someone has the idea or the story that they're not wanted, maybe as a child they experienced some type of abandonment which made them learn before they knew better subconsciously that they're not wanted. So now as an adult, they carry that identity subconsciously, but they don't know they're carrying it. They're just experiencing people leave them all the time. And then they're left with the same old feeling of abandonment and they don't know why. So if they ask themselves the question in that moment, what am I making it mean about me? Well, I'm making it mean that I always get abandoned. Well, what does that leave you feeling? It leaves me feeling not wanted. Maybe just by asking the question, what am I making it mean about me? You're like, oh, it makes me feel not wanted. It means that I'm not wanted. They don't want me. Now you're getting to the identity. So a different question you can ask if what you're making it mean about you isn't landing is what are you making it mean about that outward thing? What are you making it mean about that person? What are you making it mean about your business? What are you making it mean about your relationship? What are you making it mean about your upcoming times? So relating to the circumstance example, I would always want you guys to go deeper to the, the way you're relating to yourself, but sometimes it's easier to clear the layer of how you're relating to the circumstance first. An example of that is like, oh, well, this guy lied, so it means all men are bad. <laughs> That's how they're relating to this circumstance. They're making that circumstance mean this thing that they just think is how the world is. That's how you know it's subconscious. You know it's subconscious when you make something mean something that you're like, oh, this is just how it is. All men are, you can't be trusted. And it's like, no, no, no. That's just a story you develop. That's a subconscious story you develop. So when you ask questions of what am I making this mean about the circumstance, you're going to reveal a more surface layer subconscious story, which is a little different than the identity. An identity is more the I am statement, who you defined yourself as before you knew better that is now limiting your current self. It wants to be revealed. It wants the truth and the light of your awareness to, to dissolve away any identities that are not you so you can reveal who you came here to be, experience the life that you deserve. Subconscious stories will change your life when you reveal them and change them. However, the subconscious story is a little more on the surface. It's a little more close to the conscious mind. Another example of relating to the circumstance, what are you making the circumstance mean about your life, could be like, oh, clients didn't sign up this week, which means I won't hit my money goal. And it's like, wait, wait, wait what? Why are you making it mean that? A client can sign up in any second. Why would you make it mean that? So that's more the subconscious stories playing underneath the surface. How it could go deeper is what are you making your clients not signing up mean about you? 
well, it means that this isn't going to work out for me or things don't work out for me. Oh, now you have, you're starting to real, reveal a deeper identity, which could mean that B, that this person thinks they're being that is not capable. Starting to get this? The identities are the deeper I am statements we learned about ourselves before we knew better. So when you're reflecting on these things, what am I making it mean about the world or my circumstances or my upcoming times? Or what am I making it mean about myself? You're starting to reveal what's actually the code underneath the surface that's generating the experience. But if you get tripped up on what someone else did and that they're wrong and all of that, you're going to miss out on the gold. It isn't about them. And biggest plot twist of all, that sometimes your greatest villains are actually the ones that provide you your most freedom. They activate your ability to up-level, to heal, to become who you came here to be. So as much as someone seems like they could be a villain or could be doing something wrong, they're your friend in your growth. So there's no point in freaking out about why they're wrong and trying to get other people to justify you. That's just justifying your ego, but that's what you want to dissolve. You want to dissolve the very ego that's causing the experience to show up in the first place. But what most people spend all their time on is complaining about what happened, which just gets other people to reinforce them, which just further perpetuates and builds the very ego that is the universe is trying to invite you to dissolve. Okay, I want you to get so good at instead of trying to analyze the situation, just ask yourself the question, what am I making this mean about me? What am I making it mean about my life or the circumstance or this person? Now you can clear out any of the things that it's revealing. You can start doing some healing work. And I want you guys to remember at this point of the reflection that no matter what the limiting narrative or identity is, no matter how long it's been there, this identity that's been running the show, all it is is an idea made up of words. And it might be an idea that you subscribed to for decades, which is why you thought that's how the world was. It's just how the world works. But it's just an idea you picked up before you knew better. You decided about yourself before you knew better. And if it's just an idea made up of words, that means you always hold the power to change it. So when you come into the subconscious freedom community, you're going to watch me work with people to dissolve ideas, dissolve identities, and have them reveal and activate their inner truth. Have them tune back into the world of limitless possibility instead of any subconscious limiting stories that were holding them back. This is why I work with someone in the last session. I think this was the July 11th session, which is still on the community page that you'll get as soon as you sign up for the subconscious freedom community where a beautiful soul was working with me who had the identity that all that she was doing in her business meant that if she wasn't good enough, she still wasn't good enough. She dissolved that, started living in the now. It brought her power back to her and all of a sudden she brought in clients. She felt on fire in her business. We dissolved the subconscious story in that same session that this beautiful soul should be doing something else. She was relating to her present as if she should be doing something else. All of a sudden, all this energy came back to her and she was able to finish finish a painting she was working on for three years. This is the thing. People are so hard on themselves for their actions, for not getting the strategy, for not being able to do it, but it's really just a subconscious story or identity holding them back. And that's what I want to empower you with the ability to create freedom from. It's just a perspective. No matter what the limitation is, it's just a perspective, it's just a story. That means you can change it. So confronting a subconscious limitation, a subconscious story, it could be challenging. Because what you're also going to do in this confrontation is consider, well, how has holding this identity, how has making this circumstance mean this, or how has holding this identity about myself impacted my life? You're going to start seeing maybe less than ideal ways you've treated other people or showed up for yourself, and it's okay. We are all doing the best we can before we subconsciously know better. 
So this is the thing people do. They say, well, I knew better. My conscious mind knew better. That doesn't matter if your subconscious mind doesn't, which means it doesn't matter if it's not embodied in who you are. And no matter what your conscious mind learns, if your subconscious identities or stories contradict the new information you're learning, it won't be able to be embodied until you shift the subconscious stories and identities. Then you can embody that conscious awareness. Make sense? I want you guys to remind yourself as you're revealing these things, just because you think it doesn't mean it's true. Just because you thought that's how the world will work for you doesn't mean it's true. It's just a perspective and what that means is that you have the power to shift it, to choose a new identity, to choose a new way to relate to yourself, to choose a new perspective. When you change your inner world, your outer world will morph before your eyes. This is why someone will come into a session with me and they're a coach who signed up for all this strategy from all these people, invested all this stuff. They do one session with me, clear the subconscious identity that was in the way of them making more money or build, attracting more clients, and they'll text me right after the session. This has happened so many times. They'll text me right after the session and they'll say, you, you won't believe it. A client reached out to me while we were on the session. A client signed up while we were on the session. Your reality will morph before your eyes when you truly transform who you believe you are to yourself and how you perceive that world works. It's incredible. One thing that I want to remind you guys of, which is very, very important as you're doing this work, asking yourself these questions. And again, there's more supportive questions inside the subconscious freedom community and the workbook that accompanies this video. However, the questions of just what am I making this mean about myself? What is the identity, the I am statement? Who would a person have to be to themselves? What I am statement would they be holding for their reality to be showing up in this way? It's a totally different way to live life. Are you seeing this? It's like understanding if you feel like I don't want to play this game of reality, it's understanding how to take that game out and put a different game in. So you can play a different game of reality. It's why I do what I do. So as you're doing this and asking yourself this question, what am I making this mean about me? Who must I be to myself? Who must I think I am for my world to be showing up in this way? For me to be feeling this on a regular basis? What am I making this mean about the world? When you reveal these things, now you want to shift it. Now you want to have the ability to know how to shift it. So all of these stories, all of these identities you've picked up from somewhere, you learned them before you knew better. You might have learned them in response to something your parents did, so you created an identity that would be the opposite. You might have learned them from something that happened with family or friends or, or the school system or something like that that made you think this is who you must be in the world for this to be happening. For example, someone who always, always, always got in trouble or had parents who had high standards might have this identity of I'm bad or I can't do anything wrong. So then they either show up as a perfectionist or keep themselves small and don't actually go for it or constantly think that they're not worthy of these things, right? So you want to understand who would a person be to themselves for the world to be showing up in this way? Are you guys getting how cool this is? So as you're doing this, I want you to be okay with getting as close as you can get. But I want you to really have like this declaration to the universe and the back burner of all of this. I want you to say to the universe, I'm choosing to be free of this now. I want to choose a new game of reality that's more like X, Y, and Z. Show me a perspective that provides peace to my heart and understanding. Show me a perspective that frees me of this and allows me to experience a reality that's more like X, Y, Z. Show me the perspective that will create healing and freedom in my heart and advancement for my soul. When you declare these things, an amazing thing will happen because all of life will begin morphing for your freedom. It always is. People just aren't paying attention usually. So you might get off of this self-reflection. Maybe you are listening to this podcast and you're like, hmm, not sure of my identity. I have some ideas, but not really sure. Then you listen to a song and someone's singing out with words of that identity. You're like, oh my goodness, it's that. Or you have a conversation with someone who doesn't even know this work, but says, hey, you always kind of like walk around like you're doing something wrong. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's my identity. I always think I'm doing something wrong or I can't do something wrong. <laughs> you guys following? 
So let life work with you. Be awed by life. How this extension of life, which is you, starts revealing to you through people, through thought, songs, through circumstances, the exact things you need for your freedom. And guys, of course, if you guys want to know the ins and outs of this, I have a six-month training, the Subconscious Freedom Mastermind, which is the place to be in my world when you want to understand this for your own life, for your family members. And then there's the Coaches edition of the Mastermind, where I train you in these things so that you can bring this into your own practice. And there's a lot of elements of this, which is why it's a six-month training. However, this is the crux. This is the core. This is what you can get started with right away. Get good at this, and the training will be next level for you. Okay, so now let's talk about how to heal the identity once it's there. This, again, these steps are in your workbook, but for people just listening, so I'm going to give you the steps really quick, and then I'm going to break them down. So step one is to observe. Observe where you learned that. Where did you learn to think of yourself this way? Where did you learn to see yourself this way? Where did you learn to see the world that way? Step one, observe. Step two, close your eyes and connect with the version of you that represents where you learned that. When you consider where you learned that and you close your eyes to connect, What's going to happen is your subconscious is going to reveal a version of you that is around a certain age, that has a kind of certain circumstance. Don't question whether the memory was accurate or real. Don't judge what comes up. Just pay attention. So connect with the version of you that represents where you learned that. Now you want to teach this version of you a couple very important things. You want to teach this version of you why you decided what you decided from that perspective. And you want to teach that version of you why that perspective doesn't have to be true. But you want to do this with compassion, with understanding, like, oh my goodness, it's okay that you thought this. Of course you did. You're a kid. You don't, it's all right. But I'm here now and I'm here to guide you and I'm here to teach you what you're meant to know and what your soul has always known. So you want to observe that version of you, connect with it and teach it why that perspective or that identity isn't true. Then you'll want to honor what you've learned and how it helped you become who you are today. So you'll want to start to explore what some of the good qualities that came from this. Maybe it gave you strength. Maybe it taught you to show up and give your all. Maybe it taught you resilience and how to get stuff done. But then you'll want to talk to this version of you and show it the negative consequences of all of that. So what you're doing with this step is you're honoring it for the good, but showing it why this no longer serves you and is no longer a way of going about the world or seeing the world. Honoring it for the good, showing it why it's now ineffective and why it isn't true to live this way anymore and doesn't have to be true anymore. Now you want to start activating possibility. So still connected to this version of you, you want to ask yourself the question, now that I know this isn't true and this doesn't have to be my identity or the world I live in, what world becomes available to me when I am free of this? Ooh, you guys getting this? Now you're activating limitless possibility. Now you're activating what an identity truly could be. You're redefining who you are. Instead of letting your past define you, you're choosing who you'll now be in your world. So work with this part of you. Get the identity. Who do I get to be in a world where I'm free of this? If I could step into the world right now where I am completely free of this, what world would become available to me? You're accessing that world of limitless possibility. Do it with this version of you. Claim the new perspective together. Who are you now in this world? So if you're incapable, it's like I'm a being who's always capable and I'm never alone. The whole universe is supporting me and we've got each other. That version of you and you and the whole universe. Got it? So you make sure you claim the new perspective in the world you'll now live in. And what you feel in that moment is what you're going to train yourself into. You're going to wake up every morning and practice feeling that. Ask yourself that question and wake up and live as the you that is free of it. Let that feeling you access through this practice guide you. Let the you that is free of this and the frequency you tune into, which is the emotions, the feelings, the thoughts, the frequency you tune into when you ask yourself the question, what world becomes available to me and what you feel in that moment, that is a new access point to a new experience of reality you now get to train yourself into. So powerful. Okay, so now you get to claim this new perspective. 
as you're still connected to this version of you, look at this version of you and just ask this version of you, are you ready to come home to a safe space in my heart now where you can live in a world where we are free of this and you can support me to living in the way that we know we've always been meant to live. Beautiful. Now you claim the new perspective. You are a creator being and you practice and you're aware that you've had this identity or this story for decades maybe. So it's okay if you flip flop. It's okay if you go back and forth. But what it's about is being so compassionate with yourself. You're going to be way more aware after this and you're going to be like, oh my goodness, I'm aware of all the old actions, habits, the way I've treated myself and other people. That was in alignment with that identity and it could be a lot, but it's okay. Now you're aware of it and you get the power to choose differently. So I want you to keep tuning into it, keep practicing, and it's okay if you flip-flop a little bit. Your transformation is akin to how the seasons change. It doesn't go from just fall to winter, and it doesn't go from just winter to spring one day, and it doesn't just go from spring to summer. It's gradual. Every day it changes a little bit. Sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's warm, sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's warm until the new season anchors in. So know it's okay to go back and forth, it's okay to flip-flop. And be aware of the residue you get to clean up on the side of freedom. So there might be some residue, breakthrough residue, that is just an effect of the momentum of living that life a certain way. So maybe there's some people to say sorry to, maybe there's some relationships to start claiming and explaining how you now want to show up to, in the world and how you'd love for them to be patient with you as you practice showing up in that way and really be supportive with you. There might be some stuff to clean up in your actions and your finances and the way you clean up your home, what you need to clean up in your home. Only you know what the residue was of living in that old world and you want to ask yourself, how can I take action to clean up that residue as a representation of the new me I now am? I want you guys to know that no matter how long a perspective is there, you always hold the power to change it. And I want you guys also to know that when you watch me work with people live in the subconscious freedom community, you will get this at a different level. You'll see it the transformation happen before your eyes. You'll see souls come alive. You'll see people activate new realities before your eyes. And it will show you the questions I ask, the way I coach someone will show you how to ask yourself different questions to make this process easier, to make it regular. Keep plugging into those sessions. Keep watching them. Keep studying them. Keep self-reflecting as you do. You're going to change your freaking life with this. If you want to know the ins and outs of this, if you want to free yourself from triggers. Understand how to change behaviors by shifting the subconscious. Understand how to actually do these steps and the intricacies of them that I can't teach on a free podcast without talking to you back and forth and without giving you the details that are in the six-month training. If you want to know the ins and outs of this, look out for the Subconscious Freedom Mastermind starting this November. And if you want to train your clients through this, listening to this podcast isn't effective to train your clients through this. Come in and take the coaching certification and let me train you in the ins and outs of this. Okay, beautiful souls. So in the Subconscious Freedom Community chat, now is the time to go ask your questions. I'll riff back and forth in any voice notes to let this land deeper. And those of you who are just listening to the podcast, the community is free. So you can go into the community with the link below and ask any questions. Okay, so the crux of this work is that when you change your inner world, your outer world will shift. Your outer world is you. But what most people do is work so hard to change their outer world. And they don't get why when their outer world changes, they still feel the same old way. This is why we see so many stories of people making all the money but still feeling the same old way. It's because nothing outside of you is going to transform what your heart and soul are asking for you to transform within. This work, this subconscious freedom work, is the soul work. It's the work that allows you to clear out anything that is clouding up the soul that you came here to be. And I'm so grateful to get to do it with you. So plug into the community, ask any questions. If you want to go deeper, come into the mastermind.
If you want to learn this for clients, come into the coach's version of the mastermind. And if you want to work with me one-on-one, my one-on-one applications are always below and we can sign you up for as soon as I have the next spot open. But if you feel the call in your heart to work with me one-on-one, I always say go for it because these spots are usually very filled up. All right, beautiful souls, I'm here for your questions. I can't wait to see what kind of questions are in the community chat. I hope that this is something you can keep coming back to. You can keep listening to to get better and better at this work. So you can slice through the noise, the illusions of the reality, and get to the point of what's going on within you that you can transform that life's inviting you to heal and up level so you can experience the version of reality that your heart wants to experience the most. Thank you for being here with me. Bye for now.